Hi, I'm Stanley Siegel, a psychotherapist in New York City for nearly 40 years. I've um, published many books over the course of my long career. I've been the psychology columnist for Newsday. I've been a psychology columnist until recently for Psychology Today magazine. I've um, been a consultant to uh, a couple of television programs. I've appeared on Good Morning America several times and The Oprah Winfrey Show as well as uh, many others. Well, th this project, uh, Psychology Tomorrow magazine, is in part a response to uh, an episode that happened with me uh, and my column uh, for Psychology Today magazine. I wrote a column, as I usually do for Psychology Today, uh, a weekly column on the subject of sex called Intelligent Lust that really uh, set a firestorm of controversy. It's a column that explores uh, the creativity of sexuality. The column was called Sex Worker or Therapist. It made analogies between uh, those uh, sex workers who really uh, feel that their work uh, involves an extraordinarily compassionate and empathetic process with their clients. And I made comparisons between the kinds of skills and talents that a sex worker might use in their work with a client and that over the years um, I have discovered that therapists use, including myself. This created a, a, a great um, uh, reaction on the part of the editors of Psychology Today. As a result of that, with a little conversation, or no conversation actually, uh, I was dismissed uh, overnight uh, from a column that I had done uh, for quite a number of months. The result of that was an outcry from uh, the more than 400,000 readers who followed my column um, demanding that Psychology Today uh, reinstitute the column, take responsibility for their prejudices and conservatism um, in relation to what happened. So, uh, of course, that didn't happen. Many people sent uh, emails to Psychology Today and wrote comments on my website about this. One of the more interesting comments was, instead, start your own column. The writer even suggested the title of it called Psychology Tomorrow. Well, needless to say, the idea completely inspired me. I want to create a magazine that speaks to what I consider the art of psychology, and that is that we uh, begin to really appreciate human behavior as a uh, creative element in everyone's life and that we stop pathologizing behavior or defining them in diagnostic categories. Well, I, I think in uh, response to the criticism of the field of psychology and psychotherapy um, and what people describe as loose science or hocus pocus in the extreme, uh, the field has moved towards trying to uh, establish a scientific foundation. In the process of that, it has lost an interest in what I've always considered the most essential part of the practice of psychotherapy and the part that actually influences people the greatest, which is both an understanding of people's creativity in solving their problems and also in the therapist's creativity in working with a patient's, uh, a patient's life dilemmas. I wanted to take things a step further too and look at people's self-expressions, uh, people who make art, and look at both the psychology of that self-expression and look at the work of art too as a reflection of that. What is it that I'm interested in? I'm interested in the intersection between a person's psychology and how they express it through art. The magazine will include photographs, an analysis of uh, choreography, in particular dance pieces, visual arts, short stories, poetry, as a reflection of the psychology of the artist. There's been a tremendous amount of support uh, for the idea of Psychology Tomorrow, both because it challenged 
challenges the conservatism of uh, such magazines as Psychology Today and uh, explores the potential of the future of psychology. Many of my readers uh, have written uh, in support of a magazine which reflects a more humanistic and artistic point of view and uh, that has given me a tremendous amount of encouragement to move forward with this. Psychology Today and related magazines are really artifacts of the past. Psychology Tomorrow magazine will not be like any magazine available today. It will be a reflection of uh, new ideas in the field of psychology. It will be less an emphasis on clinical and academic issues, although they'll certainly be presented in the most artistic ways possible, but it will also be about the creativity. Psychology Tomorrow magazine will focus a good deal on sex, unlike psychology magazines of the past, this magazine will have a sex-positive approach. It'll explore the idea of sexuality as creative expression. It will uh, deal with many of the issues that other magazines are afraid to examine regarding sex, from fetishes to ideas about domination and submission. The magazine will move beyond conventional definitions of sexuality in the way in which we parcel things into gay, straight, bisexual, and to broaden the perspective on what sexuality is and pay much more attention to people's individual expression of their sexuality versus how we categorize them. We'll examine the specific kinds of sexual fantasies and behavior that people uh, create in their lives, all with a positive spin. Many of my readers have suggested that I introduce a magazine that was relevant to their particular needs and ideas. And it's about time that someone took them up on that idea. And it's going to be me. Psychology Today said that I was attracting large numbers of the wrong type of reader. Well, the wrong type of reader for them is the right type of reader for me.